uh, have good ambitions to work hard. But when you really dissect mm-hmm. what that looks like, uh, you know, for a guy maybe like you or myself, you're like, I know you feel like that's working hard, but let me tell you how much more you probably have to give. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, as an athlete, you know that. And, you know, I've I've done some extreme sports as well. And you that's when you have to dig into your pool of like a true deep energy. And, you know, that when you think that you've gone as far as you can, when you've done as many reps as you can, is if you run as far as you can, you're going to have to dig deep and just run a little bit further yeah. and grind a little bit harder. So you, you don't realize what you have in you until you can push those limits. What, and, and I understand what you're saying a hundred percent. And I've been, I, I really want to convey this to people that, that don't quite get it or not understanding how to transition from what they believe to be working hard to really working hard to achieve success. I can relate it. I, I had a big race in Iceland back in December. It was a 24 hour race and it was how, how far you can run in the 24 hours. And I remember being at the finish line, listening to the interview of the winner. Now I'd ran 43 miles. He ran, I want to say 76, 78 and he said, I, he's like, I threw up four times and kept going. Now, he passed me like on mile 12 or something like that in the middle of the night. And I'm listening to him going, I threw up four times. And he didn't throw up because he was sick. He threw up because he was pushing his body to the absolute limit that his body could handle physically, mentally. And he kept going. And he did it again. And he kept going and did it again. And so for me, on my last race, I thought, you know, I'm going to run and race as hard as I can until I'm, you know, I feel like I'm going to throw up, right? So I, I knew what that limit was. How do we feel like we're going to throw up in business? And, I, you know, I, it, it sounds like a grotesque way to describe that. But to me, it's like the ultimate push to your limit in something. What, how do you push to your limit in business and know that you're moving the ball forward? Wow. That's, that's a really, that's a really great question. And I would say setting, um, what, what your desired outcome is. So if you can define your outcome and create that roadmap to that outcome and that if you set, if you, if you're able to achieve that outcome quite easily, then you didn't set it high enough. Mm -hmm. Like you need to set your goals. Um, you need to set your goals to a point to where they terrify you. Like there's no way I can do that. And I think that once, if you're able to achieve your goals too quickly, you didn't set them high enough. You want to get to the point to where you have to really grind and stretch to get even close to those. And, you know, a friend of mine once told me, you know, if you shoot for the stars, the worst case scenario is you end up on the moon. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's, that's a huge plus. So set big, big goals that terrify the hell out of you and push yourself beyond what you thought you could do. You mentioned that you've been writing down your goals since the eighties. I I have been as well. Maybe that was a thing of the eighties. I I was listening to uh, Mark Victor Hansen a lot back in the day. It was one of those motivational speeches, uh, Pat Riley, you know, these guys, but everybody talked about goal setting. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful tool. Yeah. And uh, you, yeah. you talked about doing that way back then. I mean, have you seen, I, I mean, obviously you've seen results from that, but have your goals been on target and, and you pursued them? Um, I would say that it was a mixed bag. I would say that if you, if you don't, you know, like a goal not written down is just a good intention mm-hmm. and good intentions really will get you nowhere. Um, I found that now I set my goals so high that I probably achieve maybe 50% of them. And then I check in with my goals at least once a month um, and see if I need to pivot on stuff. Because if you set a goal and you find, I mean, doing, doing the same thing over and over and achieving the same result is, is the definition of insanity. If you run into that situation with one of your goals and you've got, you know, and you're just doing the wrong thing, um, you might look at pivoting. So 
uh, I mean, those are those are options with you, with you know, with me at least. Like if I see that I'm doing something, and well, this doesn't make sense anymore, so I'm going to rearrange my goal a little bit, rearrange my action plan, um, you know, to you know to make this make more sense because you don't want to do something a that doesn't make you happy and b you know isn't giving you a good return on investment and that return on best investment doesn't necessarily need to, need to be cash it needs to be a sense of satisfaction a sense of contribution so um you know occasionally you need to sort of pivot off of those so i would say that 50 percent of what i write down i achieve mm -hmm. and and just to reinforce that it's the act of writing it down, revisiting it, seeing it over and over again, gives you that drive to complete it and have that success, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, my philosophy is think it and ink it. It's like think about what you want to do, write it down, create your action plan, because um, you're not. You, it, it's going to be a major struggle for you to be successful um if you don't have a plan and you're not working it yeah you also said something that i appreciate earlier and that was about um you know the sweetener business was a side hustle early on you got into the entertainment mm -hmm. business and then you circled back to it and i think oftentimes mm -hmm. you know whether it's a side hustle or a hobby at some point in our lives we're doing it because we enjoy it or it's something that we're fascinated mm -hmm. by or we take pleasure from or there's a, an opportunity there. But life gets in the way. Careers get in the way. Um, I don't know. Immediate satisfaction money gets in the way and you put those things aside. But clearly this is something that you came back to. And I think I think a lot of times people often overlook some of those opportunities in their life that might have existed at one point. Clearly you brought this one back mm -hmm. back to life. Now you didn't mention – how much of a side hustle it was or what that entailed. But I'm, I'm guessing that by bringing it back, clearly you've had success from it because there was an early interest in it. Yeah. I mean, it was something that I was passionate about, you know, and I, wouldn't, and I wouldn't say that I was, I was really passionate about the things that I did, you know, in the entertainment industry. I think that the things that I did um, within the entertainment industry were more ego based. It mm. was, you know, it was something to placate my ego. Um, I, my, you know, my foray into, you know, into uh, food products and ingredients was really more about making a difference. And it was more about coming from a space of contribution. So, I mean, completely two sort of different motivations. And so the stuff that's ego driven is very temporary. Like you have to keep feeding the, the ego machine you come from a space of like contribution and legacy those things just come naturally and you can just burn and you know you can put in 12 hours a day without feeling tired you mm -hmm. know because it's your passion i'm i'm on your website for um saviva and i'm looking at your mission mm -hmm. there oh. and it says it's to create and maintain health <laughs> not just for consumers but also for the planet and society we all mm -hmm. share we balance commitment to our shareholders with giving back to the community. And then, you know, just looking above that, you've got some bullet points about, you know, packaging made with 100% recyclable plastic, alternative fuel, mm -hmm. you know, all this stuff. I mean, how hard is it to defend that? Because I know people want to call bullshit on these types of statements. Um, you've talked mm -hmm. about on the show that this is what's made the difference in your career choices. You know, you just talked about entertainment mm -hmm. and that self you know, ego driven. This is the complete opposite of that. And I would imagine that you probably have to defend these statements on a daily basis. And what is that like and how hard is it? Um, well, it's not very difficult, you know, because we have systems in place that, you know, that allow us, you know, like, like our supply chain for packaging for materials, you know, um, we, we have a lot of restrictions and a lot of qualifications that people have to, um, you know, have to fall under in order to become, you know, one of our vendors. So having the correct systems in place is sort of your, the, the stop gap, I guess, for, um, you know, for those types of initiatives. So, and that's totally what we have. And like, we, you know, fueling, you know, our vehicles that, you know, that take diesel fuel 
being able to, you know, have a card lock that only allows you to, to put uh, biodiesel in those. So if you have the systems in place, it's not too tough. And as far as people calling bullshit on it, um, we, we have all of our documentation because we're audited every year. And so anybody who has questions about our brand, we can certainly provide them with that documentation. Mm -hmm. But what, what about just as an individual and a leader, you know, you're, you're in the conference room or, or you're out socializing mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, you know, we, we get back to the planet and, you know, doing all these great things for society and <laughs> people are looking at you going, okay, Tom, you know, um, <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'm a huge advocate in giving back. I own a wine company where we donate back to orphanages in Baja. And, you know, oh, I, nice. I, I, uh, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, right? It's my company and I feel good about it. And, but I want, I want people to also understand the value in giving back and sharing in these commitments together. And I'd like to see more people doing it. Um, the reason why I put you on the spot with that is I think if we all have that give back mentality, we're a better place, you know, where we live and, and breathe. And um, I, I just want people to understand that a lot of people come, these, these statements come from the heart. They're, they're true statements, and we try really hard to maintain those. Clearly, you have systems in place. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and we, we have to have systems in place because the thing is, like, if anybody ever, you know, wants to call us out on, you know, on any of the claims that we make, we have to be able to substantiate that. So, and I think that on a personal level, um, on a personal level, running a company who that has those types of values are, it, it's way more satisfying for me. So I guess that there, there's a little bit of selfishness in that because I want to feel good about what I do. And I also want to feel good about who I am and, you know, and my why behind what it is I do. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point. Your why behind what you do. I think part of that goal uh, process is knowing what your why is and then and striving to achieve it in whatever you do. 100%. Like if you don't understand your purpose, um, then there's, it, that's also going to be sort of a barrier to your success. So being able to define your purpose you know, on a daily basis, even. So like the, you know, when I get up in the morning, the first thing that I do is I, I start to journal. I start to write down, you know, like how I feel, you know, and did I practice, you know, restraint, um, you know, bad habits or just behaviors. And then what can I do better today? Followed by what is my purpose? And so if you just can define your purpose on, on a, daily basis like why why am i doing what i'm doing um it really is a, is a big catalyst for you know providing you with direction um that will that will eventually bring you success mm -hmm. yeah you know i talk of a lot of my show at the end of the show it's something that i learned from a colleague of mine david Meltzer, uh about journaling every morning mm -hmm. writing down the things that you have more than enough of and I, I find it amazing just by going through that process on a daily basis. And, and maybe you don't get to write it down every day, but if you think about it, we're also very blessed in, in the things that we have in this day and age. We're, we're privileged to live in the generation that we live in. And I think that you find by journaling, like what you're talking about, is that you really do have a lot when you, when you start to write it down and think about all the wonderful things. And it certainly overshadows the negativity that's out there or the, or the challenging times that you might be going through because, uh, again, I think they were just very fortunate. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, part of my journaling process, I mean, I, I have a pretty regimented uh, a process that I use, but also part of it is gratitude. Like, what are the things that I'm grateful for? And, you know, I find that, you know, I'm not going to wake up in a perfect mood every day. I, there's going to be some days that I'm grumpy, but it's like, if I can go back to, if I can go back to, to gratitude, the things that I'm grateful for, like my family and my amazing sisters that like really support me. Um, when you, when you're able to come from a space of gratitude, you can get a mindset shift. Uh, that's pretty incredible because I don't think that, you know, anger and fear and, you know, and disappointment 
can actually exist in the same place with gratitude. So if you can, you know, continually have an attitude of gratitude, it's that really propels you forward. Yeah. Listen, I want to talk about your book a little bit, but is there anything else 